Okay, Guru. Welcome, everyone. Thank you very much for your <laughs> taking your time out. You know, I, I was talking to David for yesterday to one of the parents who happened to remember. Uh, Ushamam would know if I tell the name. <laughs> he and his whole family with the children, they have gone down to Harvard in the US with it. And I was talking to him and I said, it looks like that you are, he was saying hello to me. And I said, it looks like that you are not in India. Are you somewhere in the US? He said, yes, sir. I am in Boston. I said, have you been to Harvard? He said, actually, I have just finished my visit in Harvard and I thought of calling you and my children and we are all so excited. So I said, don't make the mistake of not going and visiting, which is called HDS, Harvard Divinity School, by David Clooney is running the college. And you know what? HDS is teaching Vedanta. I've been sharing with you all the books and things of that. So at NYU, I told him, New York University. I said, you are in New York. Don't forget to visit Manhattan. In Manhattan, just uh, one block away from the Central Park is the Vedanta Ashram of Sarva Priyananda. I said, go and take his blessing for your children. He's a very powerful. He's considered to be today by the Ramakrishna mission, by the great monks, without declaring, because to them Swami Vivekananda is great or inspiring. But they say if somebody's closest to Vivekananda is talking, it's a Sarva Priyananda who's doing it. <laughs> and as you know, we keep talking, mentioning about all the great masters. So uh, today I am referring to his conversation with me. So I asked him, so what did you find out in Harvard visit? What is your, you know what he said? He said, sir, I am amazed. So he was saying the most astounding tree for me and his wife he said, we found what you have been talking about in this school, what we have been talking here, is what he heard there in Harvard. And what is that? And we are not copycat. We are talking about it for a long time. Harvard has started now. He said, whatever you are learning, whether it is science or art or literature or philosophy or business or finance or management, he said, there has to be a period for what ethics and values and this is what we're talking about ethical manifestation with the paradigm shift now, with the paradigm shift to the way we look at the life look at our life and we have been gently pursuing it and talking about it and each one of you i know each one of you are doing it because once you get infected with vedanta firstly you are blessed because you and I must be blessed, otherwise we cannot be together, one. And secondly, think about Vedanta. How can we think about Vedanta? Before this, don't mind, we were all monkey. We had great fun, we were looking here, looking there, enjoying, restless mind. No? And what? We failed to see what really life is. And today, at least we know it now. And the topic that we are thinking about, talking about, this is uh, what we're going to discuss. In punchline, have you realized that when I, when you all have been hearing Mahavakyas, four Mahavakyas, though there are more Mahavakyas in Bhagavad Gita and in Upanishad and in Vedanta, which is Brahma Sutra, Bhagavad Gita, and Upanishad. There are three which combines together to make it Vedanta. Vedanta, those of you who are very familiar, don't get irritated if I touch upon some of the small thing. Because one of the great monks used to say that whenever you are sharing something with someone, there should be for everybody something. It's something very nice quote. There should be for everybody something. And there should be something for everybody. For everybody something, meaning those of us who are not very familiar with Vedanta, we should understand something. And for some people, there should be everything, whatever they wanted. Our intention is to do that today. Now, in which 
the the topic actually the name i will say i'm referring to it's called advaita makaranda that this particular book is not there with me i will try and get that i just come to know about it for the first time in the last few days <laughs> advaita makaranda what it means is that the honey of advaita vedanta so what advaita makaranda is uh, written by someone whose name is lakshmi bharat kavi about maybe 4 500 years after shankaracharya post shankaracharya and what he has done everything from before him you know shankaracharya he had done those 10 maybe 11 because the 11th one shwetaswara upanishad we are not sure but it is done by as per the specialists in the world they talk about by shankaracharya it may have been somebody whose language is like shankaracharya have you realized today have you realized none of the vedanta is or upanishad is written by somebody and put their name so shankaracharya is also not done his you know the the entire explanation uh, karikas with names written on it and it is known generally handed down to the word of mouth and that's how so the swetashwara upanishad whether it is done by shankaracharya or not nobody knows but they think by the language trait and the way he is talking about maybe by him so there are ten upanishad there is brahma sutra and there is bhagavad gita this is vedanta to so all what is talked about all the argument which is given earlier what lakshmi kavi lakshmi bharat kavi what he has done he has combined it together and calls it honey advaita makaranda honey nectar and we are going to touch upon it you know what does it start with it beautiful and without the adjective i must tell you he said see what is it when i say mahabhakya aham brahmasmi you say yeah we have heard it many times have you realized you say yeah i know that sentence but me brahman yeah yeah <laughs> what do we have doubts so he starting and today's topic should be we have doubts so the topic should be can you doubt the doubter can you doubt the one who doubts of its presence the one thing i am doubting what are you saying can i doubt that i don't exist we can the so this is how he started and it's so beautifully written i'm going to share with you uh, these today's session the first paragraph the first poem in him it it's only 26 poem you know like um, mandakya upanishad as you know such a small book but on which the karika is written 220 pages meaning and so today we are going to talk about only the first line of the first poem but i'll read out the first poem and it's very simple he's a poet and in sanskrit it's very simple and all of us have been introduced to a little bit of sanskrit in our school days being an indian so and even if you don't you because it is our hindi language uh, marathi language and most of the language is are from there i don't know if you know paramahamsa yogananda is writing in chapter 2 verse 31 page 246 volume 1 of bhagavad gita on the fourth para he is writing that india the conquered would conquer her conquerors and there he is talking about that that these shlokas what we have what he has got it from cannot be created by anybody by anything there is his connection paramahamsa yogananda is referring to it and here what is he talking about aham asmi sada bhavami what it mean aham asmi i 
एंड सदा भाव ऑलवेज देर वोट इज इट मीन आई जस्ट टॉक अबाउट इट लेट्स रीड द होल पोएम इसे इज कदा मरहन प्रिया आनंद अक्षम मीनिंग ऑलवेज इन जॉय इन फन वंस यू अंडरस्टैंड दिस द फर्स्ट लाइन इज दे सदा अस्मि सदा भौमि अहम अस्मि सदा भौमि I am always thinking. What does it mean? This thing. You can see the flowers today. Great love from Sharda Bam and our team. We had a wonderful session in the school being a Sunday today. So Sharda Bam and our team organized it on Saturday. I'll send you the link. It was fantastically done, very well done, and touched upon a lot of our ancient masters and things like that. So the flowers. You can see the flower. So what do you say? I can see the flowers, okay. But if you look at it clearly and if you put it appropriately, what will you say? I am seeing the flower, right? I am seeing the flower. Supposing I say, let's forget the flower. Look at this camera. Do you say I can see the camera? Now look at it categorically. What do you say? I am seeing. I am seeing the camera. Suppose you say, "Can you hear me? Can you see me?" You say, "Yes, I can see you. I can hear you." But if you look at appropriately, I am seeing you. I am hearing you. Are you realizing that? This is what he is talking about. Is aham asmi, I am. Sada bhami, always there. You say, I'm feeling very happy. Who's feeling happy? I am. I am down. I am depressed. Who is depressed? I am. The other thing you say, you gone up to sleep, and you woken up. You say, when you were sleeping, you will say, "I am sleeping." Supposing you call, "I am dreaming." Supposing you call, meaning you can't because you're sleeping, and you can't because you're dreaming. You are yourself dreaming. Have you realized? Let's see your thoughts. I am thinking. when you are meditating millions and thousands of thoughts keep coming and bombarding your head no i am thinking are you realizing just imagine just post shankaracharya about 300 years or so approximately <laughs> is is what i am can you doubt that i am not there this is what he is what is he doing is bringing out when all the time i am all the time i am meditating all the time i am hungry when when i am hungry <laughs> no 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 i am full i am happy <coughs> when all the time that time when you are happy When you say, "Are you realizing what a strong, powerful, and strangely, uh, we didn't know much about it?" Uh, let me get you back to the little bit of uh, which I was searching. Swami Tejobayananda of Chinmayananda Ashram. He is the first one, and before him, Dayanand Saraswati. You all would have read about him. He brought about first the presence of this particular book. By Dhanan Saraswati is about 150 to 200 years or so, and uh, Swami Tejmananda will be about 150 years or so. And you know, Chinmananda Ashram. 
I've talked to you all about uh, him. It's a very interesting phenomenon. He was a journalist, Chinmayananda. Chinmayananda, before becoming Chinmayananda, he went to Gangotri via Rishikesh. And he met our very famous monk, those of you who must have heard, uh, he is Shivan. Uh, hmm? Shivan. Uh, Shivan. Chidananda. His name is Shivananda. Hmm? Shivananda. Yes. Shivananda. Shivananda Ashram. Shivananda, he went to Shivananda and he said, I want to learn about Vedanta. Who is going to teach? He was writing as a journalist. And then Shivananda told him, okay, you go to Gangotri and go and meet Tapuvan Muni. Tapuvan Muni is not tough. And he's, he stays in Tapuvan. That's why his name is Tapuvan. Tapuvan is further down, very hostile, always frozen. Imagine, even in the winter, Tapuvan Muni never came down. And the people who went to learn Vedanta from him, they had to live under their own arrangement in their little hut they have to create. Imagine, there is nothing. And they have to beg their food and make their own food arrangement. Because Tapuvan Muni does not have a big ashram there to feed everybody. Otherwise, all the ashrams do that. No? They take money. Ancient time, kings used to support. Now, nobody is supporting Tapuvan Muni there. So, he went to Tapuvan Muni and he, he had a very tough time. He had to search for a place where he would stay. It's very cold. And there is no heater. There is nothing. No fire also. You have to live in that. And you have got what? Just a hut, one blanket, and maybe a topi if you're lucky <laughs> to cover your head and woolen whatever dress. And you have to hunt for your own food. And there is almost nobody there. There must be a few people. You have to go and beg your food and eat only one time a day. On top of that, Tapuvan Muni had, and which this Chinwananda has done his gait uh, work, on top of that, his rule was, Tapavan Muni's rule was, that whatever he teaches in the morning, every word of it, he is going to check with you in the afternoon. He used to do two sessions, one morning, and then whatever you eat, that 12 o'clock one time, and then again in the afternoon. And supposing you've forgotten one line, you are sort out. You can't continue Tapavan Muni's teaching. Imagine, Despite all this, he still had a lot of students. So can you imagine what kind of a people those monks were? How powerful memory. You and I, we hear about, read about something and within no time we forget about it also. This Chinmanandaji has a very interesting session. One day, he asked the one morning, Sir, why all this? If Aham Brahmasmi, and that's what you're talking about just now. If I am Brahma, he is doubting it. <laughs> this is what Lakshmi Bharat Muni is talking about, a poet, Kavi, Lakshmi Bharat Kavi. He's saying, you cannot doubt the doubter. You're doubting. Can you doubt that you were there? He said, no. So Chinmayananda was answered by Tapavan Muni separately. He said, how do I know that I am this Brahman? And if everything is Brahman, then why all this journey? I'm already Brahman. So, Tapuvan Muni nodded his head, didn't answer. In the afternoon session, he suddenly looked at Tapuvan Muni and said, Bring me some water. So, <laughs> Tapuvan Muni was surprised. In that cold winter, and if you see the river Ganga is right below, but you have to go down about 300 yards down the slope, then the river Ganga, which is in a very thin stream, and he will go down. So he went down, he took a lota, went down and picked up the lota full of water and came down. And as he entered with the lota, you all have heard this story from me. Tapuvarmani fired him. What have you done? Chinmananda was shocked, he was surprised. He said, sir, uh, what have you brought? He said, sir, I brought water. He said, have you brought water? 
What are you holding? This is a lota filled with water. Say, why have you brought lota? I asked you for water. Can you imagine how they used to teach the essence of the Vedanta? The Chirmananda says, he writes in a thing. Instantly it hit him. What was the question he was asking? Why is all this necessary? The Tapavar Nuni is telling, why is the lota necessary if you just want water? Why is this world necessary? It for you to chew the world. And now, last Sunday's talk. Remember what we were talking about. We missed some of you, especially Vijay sir. See, he talked about, we think what? We think we are this little body. And I have this, this, this strength and these this, this weaknesses. Why weaknesses? Because of my mind and because of my body. Why? Because I have given myself this name and this body and I have a mind and you say, no, I don't think so. Who doesn't think so? I. Who is suffering from sickness, disease, the body? Not you. You are separate and not the mind. The mind is suffering but not you. Mind is not you. Body is not you. You separate. I have that body and the mind. So what do I think? I am all by myself. I am isolated. And I have to take care of myself. And I am responsible for my husband, wife, children, parent, this company, this whatever little responsibility that we have. I have to work hard. I have to do that to support them. And this world punchline is huge and most important is this world is uncaring this world is not bothered what happens to me my daughter my son my grandchildren or my company whether the company is running at a loss or at a profit profit many I have worked on reminds me of another story but I will not tell that now <laughs> we will divert from the topic I have done it and if it is lost, why does it have to be me? No? Why me? Why me? And this is what is going around today. The world is uncaring. This universe is uncaring and huge. And the second part, I am soon going to be old and I am soon going to be dying. I'll be dead and gone. But the world will continue. The universe is continuing. The universe is not bothered. What happens to me? What happens to my company? What happens to my family? I have to manage. I have to keep insurance for my old age. <laughs> I have to leave money for my sons and daughters. Are you with me? This is what we were talking about. Is what Chinmananda understood immediately. He is the one who translated and bought this. That honeybees goes from flower to flower and collects nectar different different flowers, different different honey and brings it and puts it into the honeycomb which you and I get the honey, nectar just like this Lakshmi Bharat Kavi has done it in which his first word Aham Asmi Sada Bhami is talking about look all the time we are thinking about I am Aham Asmi there is no time we talked about it before this that you know there are multiple views of this consciousness. Aham Brahma I am Sat Chit Ananda. There are multiple views. There is ancient Advaitic view, there is Kashmiri Shaivism, and like that. There are Western views and things like that. So here, you know, like Kashmiri Shaivism is closest to that but Kashmiri Shaivism has got dynamic is this whole universe is uh, Bhakti is one paradigm which is Prakriti and Purusha God is up there and we are down here God, Divine Mother, Shiva, Kali Brahma, Vishnu, Maheshwara or Allah or Christ or whatever name you like to call is powerful very dynamic and has created this universe and has created me also. But there is duality. Two, God, 
and me. Kashmiri Shaivism is closest to monoism. One. Advaita is non-dual. Only one. Not two. Non-dual. Advaita. And here, Kashmiri Shaivism was saying, Shiva is the one. Right? But Mother Kali is the one who is the Prakriti. Shiva is the Purusha. Shiva is not doing anything. But Shiva gives the power to Mother Kali. And Mother Kali is doing everything. Right? So that dynamism is there in the Kashmiri Shaivism. But in the Advaita, not two, only one. You see, that Shiva and Prakriti, that both are only in one. And that one is none other than Sat Chit Ananda. Taitari Upanishad, remember? We will again touch upon it as we go now. But that Sat Chit Ananda is who? You. None other than you. And this is the thing, this is what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah, okay, I have understood. So what, what has happened to you and me? We have read a little bit, we intellectual understanding a little bit, we memory a little bit of Mahavakyas and all that. How can it be me? Come on, let's face the fact. How can it be me? I have this issue with that issue. And this is what he's saying. Okay, so let us look at it. In simple principles of Vedantic understanding. What is it? Shavanam, Maranam, Nidityasanam. So we have heard, already heard before this. Aham Brahmasmi. Almost everybody, those who have not been taken to Advaita, they also know. Aham Brahmasmi. They heard it more or less, almost everybody. He said, Mananam. Mananam is what? Challenging. Ask it, reflect upon it, ask questions to understand it better, right? So in that Mananam, this Lakshmi Bharat Kavi is telling us that look, reflect on it. Do you have a doubt that I am, that I am is there? So with that, he says, Shavadam, Mananam, and once you realize that yes, I am, then I am going to do Nidityasana, make it my own, stamp it my own once you make it your own just like you know supposing you're teaching Charles law Boyle's law faraday's law Ohm's law you will not forget it but if you're not teaching that subject what you had read in the school college days you forgot no totally forgot it's the same way he says once you uh, let's say how to walk how to swim once you learnt it you forget now how many times have you fallen down? Like champion, the grandson, Reed, or Vijayasar's grandson, they're same age, one week. <laughs> Different. They will not remember how many times they've fallen down. They're falling down now while walking. And you and I don't remember it at all. This understanding that how come we don't forget? Do you forget what the vanilla ice cream tastes like? No. What is sugar taste like? No. Salt taste like? No. But why do you forget what is written in Ashok Stamma? <laughs> you realize? We've been talking about it. Satyameva Jayate is the only one which will make you be a winner in life. Satyameva. And notice, Harvard is talking about ethical manifestation value and ethics and us what happened to us and in why he was talking and even Thompson I shared with you all who's written that from British Columbia University in Canada so the world's top people are talking about it they're talking about Ashtavakra Gita and most of us Indian know very little so now continuing with this so this present experience of our life that we are Brahman is the difficult part of it in which we are getting straight onto the paradigm paradigm is the way you look at it so there are lots of paradigms you know most of the religious practices they have paradigm way the way 
uh, you know, if you look at it, in Islam, they do it like this. In Christianity, they would do it like this. In Hinduism, you do it like that. And like that, there are various ways. This is a way of our practicing of the religion. Now, this paradigm is one thing that you need to understand and may be different. So one, I'll take you to three major paradigms. One is Bhakti. What is that? God is there, God is very powerful and God could be mother, God could be father, God is the one which I believe in. I often ask our students, do you believe in God? Some say no sir. <laughs> Some say yes. And what do you believe? And then I ask them, they give a name. This is how they have been handed down by their parent, grandparent and society and whatever. Now, this paradigm is bhakti yoga in which God is supreme, God is powerful, God can do anything. And I am dependent on God to protect me and protect my life. And if I forget to put the diya for Anuvanji, he's going to curse me. I put diya for everybody and as I'm going out, I suddenly remember, oh, 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 I forgot to light the Agarbatti for Anuvanji. So I come running back, I'm getting late. No, 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 I don't want him to get angry. This is the kind of a paradigm we have got, which is a mixed up kind of thing. How can God be angry with you? See, you remember that other day I shared with you all a book. If God really exists, then why do we suffer? That book which got written through my hand. Why do we suffer? This was I collected from maybe for punishments and things like that. To share that, how can God be... You see here the mother is there with champion dream. Will the mother ever do something to punish the child? When they grow up and they do some mistake, maybe they, in the heart they must be crying, but they still give you an apparent punishment. But if they grow up, in the tiny baby, nobody wants to do it. Why should the baby die then? Why should the insects die, which should be eaten up by a lizard, wall lizards, or a dinosaur, <laughs> Jurassic Park, or a tiger coming and attacking a, you know, harmless deer. Why should that happen? This is the question which come up. And this is where is the paradigm. That is, they're talking about God in this. And then, the one method, yeah? Um, how does God know that when we are suffering? Say that again. How does God, God know when we are suffering? How does God know who is suffering? When, when we are suffering. Uh, so there, when you are talking about, when you are talking about, you are talking the question from a theistic language, yeah. that is God out there, or God is there in the heaven, or God is in the temple of the church, and you are talking as a person, right? Yeah. So we are not discussing, Kini, that, yeah. which is true, right? Everything is true, in terms of uh, spirituality and religion. All processes are a good process. But in that, how do you know? As per the theistic language, because you pray and because you ask, you will be surprised what my two daughters do. You know what they do? <laughs> they think they want something, right? To write it a piece of paper, okay? They fold it and seal it with the uh, cellophane tape so that nobody knows what they're asking and they put it in Babaji's hand. Babaji is sitting like that, right? And you know what? Surprisingly, they always get it. <laughs> Recently it happened, my younger daughter did something. And I knew what it was. That's his grace, mother's grace I come to know. And when it happened, so I asked her one, what did you write? She smiled and said, I won't tell you. I said, okay. But I know it. Anyway, I didn't want to tell her that I know it. So... But when that thing happened, then I asked her, now you're happy? She said, what? <laughs> I said, you can remove the paper now, no? <laughs> so notice the paper is not there. Otherwise, I don't know if you'll notice, but those of you who are regular Sunday come here, you would have seen that there's always a white paper. And that paper is nicely sealed all around. It's written by hand. Uh, it happened many a time, amazing. I'll give you one more example. This is how they know. 
Okay, you are answering to your question. I'm giving a little deviating, but it's interesting. You know, uh, 13 girls from the school and two teachers were to go to Germany for a very special session. All girls all over the world, Germany was conducting it. And we had applied for it almost three months before for their application visa. And the letter from the Germany had come with that supporting, we had applied for the document. Almost three months before. The journey was to be 5th of July, right? And <laughs> just, just imagine, around 23rd of uh, June, Suddenly, my head of the coordinator and saw the ma'am and came and said, Sir, you need to talk to these girls. I said, Why? What happened? Sir, Germany suddenly sent last evening a message Visa can't be granted. Why? Insufficient document. What insufficient <coughs> document? Not answer. Just one line. Insufficient <coughs> document, not granted. So, naturally, two daughters were there in that team. So their heart was broken, right? So I called all the students and it was a Saturday. I said, listen, why are you all came like this? <laughs> I said, what happened? Come on, pull your collar and pull up. What, sir, pull up? We saved money for so long <laughs> to go and have fun in Germany. And now we can't go, sir. I said, you monkeys, you're a victorious kid. You're a victorious. Don't give up so fast. So what can we do now? Three months back, we had applied for visa. Nothing has happened. And now they're saying, just one week or week and a half, two weeks to go. I said, listen, don't give up. Worst come, worst what? You won't go. Face it like that. But go ahead and continue to pray. Whoever you believe in. Pray. If you don't believe in God, pray to the nature. Supreme consciousness. Scientific definition called, you know, <laughs> this manifestation of this nature. If this earth and people like you and me, whatever you call it, pray. Yes, uh, they can't say no. And I could see they're not believing me. The Monday, I can't do anything on Saturday, Saturday, Sunday, everything is closed. Uh, Monday, I got a message in my meditation, ring up that lady who has, who's organizing, the German lady. So I rang her up and I said, this is what has happened. Can you help this girl? She said, Dr. Ghosh, how? I said, why don't you talk to your German over there, the headquarter in Berlin, and she was in Berlin. I said, you talk to them. So speak to somebody, whoever is in the consul general here in India. <coughs> she said, okay, let me see what I can do. And no answer came back till evening, uh, evening of almost their afternoon of ours, about five, five and a half hours gap, no? I rang her up again, uh, our time at about 9, 9.30 and I said, could you? She said, no, actually it's very difficult, but I have found out who is the person who's in the, you know, the, in that, uh, like, uh, like your, what do you call it, HR of ministry. So like that in the ministry, who is the person? I can give you his name. I said, if I call him up, will he receive my call? He said, I can't say, you can try. They were very thorough, no? German. I said, give me the number. I called him up. You know what? He picked up my line. And he said, hello. And I said, this is the issue. My children are coming, 13 of them from India. And it is supposed to be bringing in harmony between your country, our country. We are sending it. We are a school. What mistakes have they done? I know they're my kids. There can't be anything. Why don't you speak to your consulate general here? in Mumbai. He said, let me see. I still remember his name, Adam. He said, okay, I will see what I can do. I said, can I call you back? He said, okay, you call, call me back uh, tomorrow. The next day I called him up. And he said, you talk to 
that time I think it was Mr. Frank Hurt or something was the name who was a consulate general in Mumbai. I called him up, Mumbai now. A uh, girl picked up his PA. She said, what is it? Uh, you're calling up the consul general. I said, see, this is the issue. I'm going to talk to him. He's very serious. I'm the president of the school. So hearing the name president, I think she felt okay. But she connected me. I said, see, Mr. Franklin, this is my issue. What mistake have they done? He said, I honestly don't know anything, but let me find out. You will be surprised. Three hours later, I got a call from that girl. Please tell them to resubmit their passports. Okay? Now, <laughs> the moment I told the, the, boy, the girls, all the girls were excited. It is done. I said, your monkey, it is not done. You go and just apply it now. Go down. And so next day, early morning, they all left. And I said, when they were, I got the question before only. I said, by the way, one second. Visa section, they will give you appointment only after 15 days. So what? It's not going to help. So you have to tell them. He said, see, I cannot. That's an Indian counterpart. I cannot tell them. Okay, what you can do? I'll solve your issue. You tell them to come and give it to me. The German embassy, consul general embassy, they, they accepted the passports and everybody's passport was given. And now my two champions, they had Iranian passport. Okay. Now I got a message that everybody's cleared except these two daughters. So naturally they wrote it down and put it down there and their shoulders were broken. And the girl was told the next day you can tell them to come down and pick up their passport, their visa is done. Notice now my girl student is saying, sir, instead of going tomorrow and picking it up, can we go day after? The day after was the day of their journey. Sixth was the journey, fifth they have to go, sixth early morning in the flight. I talked to them, they said yes, they said no problem. So they went, picked up the visa and they traveled. Daughters are still here and they had written down over there. You'll be surprised in two days time their visa also came through. Unthinkable, you know. A uh, country like uh, Iranian passports are really dealt with a lot of Liverpool because a lot of conflict is going on with the rest of the world and going to Germany, but they got it through. This is what they have been practicing here. So this is how God hears answering a question. I have to deviate a lot of it. Okay. So now <laughs> three paradigm. First paradigm is Bhakti. Okay. God is up there. God is powerful. We are weak. We are small. And if you pray to God and God listens to you and if you're being doing good things and things so that, God will listen to you. Second paradigm is Patanjali Yoga Sutra, meditation, Raja Yoga. If through meditation you purify your mind, you know the Ayama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayama, those eight limbs, eight limbs yoga. If you do that, then you sit here. <laughs> So, if he listens to you, and uh, if you can meditate, focus your mind, you will get into the Samadhi, you will attain one day. Okay, but there is a big problem here. Why? Because when you come out of the Samadhi, you're back again with your bank loan, back again with a troubling couple, partner, husband, wife, neighbor, whatever. You're still back in with those problems. So, this is where the dualism still exists. Right now, third thing is the paradigm is the Advaita paradigm. Is what know it, understand it, make it your own. In this slide, the Lakshmi Bharat Kavi is talking about the honey of the Advaita collecting all of them, in which he is talking about what? What is he touching upon? The insight. Once you understand, you know it. Just like, suppose you're a mother. You know I'm a mother. You know you're a father. Reminds me of a small incident happened. <laughs> Don't mind these deviations, but I think I should share with you. I was giving a talk in US in Citibank and about education. So I was talking to them about, I want to know, what is it? Reading skill. How do children develop reading skill? Love for reading skill. And this is Jim Trilly's 
who used to do a lot of workshop and I had done a lot of studies with him. So I was talking about that kind of a workshop. How do you develop love for reading? So before that I asked, there are a lot of uh, unmarried people were there and there were a lot of married people. So I just asked a question, how many of you are parents over here? So some of them raised their hands like that. Some of their hands raised their hands like that. One father raised their hand like this. You know, his hand was like that. Okay, okay, what are you asking? <laughs> so I looked at him and said, are you raising your hand? He said, yes. I said, tell me something. Why isn't your hand up there? So he was a little uncomfortable. He was looking around. There was a lady next door <laughs> to him. She said something very funny. I have not forgotten. That must be 30 years ago. You know what she said? She smiled and she said, he is not sure. <laughs> <laughs> and this guy quickly looked at her. After that, he raised his hand. So basically, we need to, whatever we do, <laughs> we should do it 100%. Not half-hearted. In this, he's talking about that insight. Keep on seeking, keep on searching, keep on asking questions. This is the Sraganam Mananam. This is the Mananam. Reflection. Part of it. Keep on reading, keep on searching, keep on asking questions. And make it your own. Just like you know, I'm a man. I have no doubt, I'm a woman. I ask her boys and girls, you must have heard me speaking to these young girls, boys, when they come. I ask them, you're a girl, right? They said, yes, you're a boy, right? One of the mother who is sitting with her daughter here was attending. And I said, I was taking on the same line of discussion for them to score 56 out of 56 and become a world top. So I ask her, tell me something. How much are you going to score? So she said 52. Good student. I said, okay. Why is it not 56? You know what the mom said? Usha <laughs> ma'am. So he said, mom said, sir, everybody can't score 56. I said, I can assure you, certainly she will not. You know why? Because you yourself don't believe in it. You have to say it, you have to believe in it. Worst come what? You won't get it. So what? At least say believe in it. Say I believe in you. Tu karega. This is what Jija Mata told Shivaji. Shivaji said, Mama, how can I be a world's top leader? I am so small. I'm only 4 foot 10 inches, was fully grown. When he was asking, he was 15 years of age. If you read his history, he was 15 years of age. He came from Dadaji Kornway along with him and Arjun Maharaj just to say, I, Namaskar, must be pending 2 3 days. And said, I, you keep telling me that I'm going to be a world top leader. How? I'm so small. She smiled and she said, who said so? Come on, Mama, look at me. He was very athletic, very sporty. He, she signaled and the Sarapati brought that white horse. She said, that he jumped up on top. Usha was shaking her head. She's heard this from me many a time. <laughs> and Jija Mata tells Shivaji, now you see how tall you are. See, it's your paradigm. It's your perspective. How are you looking at it? And inside is what ethical manifestation will make it. Meaning what? How do you make paradigm your insight, your belief, your knowing, understanding? I am that. Nikara Goswami. How? By becoming it. How do you become it? by knowing it. And how do you do it? How do you do it? Okay, okay, I want to. Ethical manifestation. Not easy, but we can start. Swami Vivekananda said, the open secret, he uses this word, open secret, the same topic. And you know what he says? The open secret is nothing else, but holding on to purity, holding on to the truth, Holding on to manifestation of taking care of the poor, the kind, the destitute. Who comes to you like that? If they come to you like that, you are supposed to do like this. Whether they come to you with a little love, little affection, little time. You know, grandma, you go and say, Hi grandma, how are you? And grandma gives you a hug and smiles and gives you a kiss. And after that, 
Ama, how are you? Darat hota hai. Beat me darat hota hai. You'll always hear. They want seeking your attention, your kindness, your love. All you have to do, you're not going to take it away, but put your hand there, little bit of massage, and say, don't worry, grandma, you'll be all right. And if it is a well-learned, educated grandma, some of the grandmas, you can say, uh, maybe the age is, let's go to the doctor tomorrow and we will check it out. Meaning what? This is what you have to establish paradigm through ethical manifestation, which is what you have to do. And this is what in Patanjali is talking about eight folds. You have to do it. In Advaita Vedanta is talking about through Panchadashi. Do you remember? Shana Sampatti. You remember Sadhana Chatushta is Viveka Vairag. And the third one, Viveka is one, Vairag is two. Third one is Sadhana, that is sixfold. Third one is what? Shama, Dama, Upurati, Titiksha, Sraddha, Samadhana, Mumukshatta, 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 which is the sixth, fourth one. So the third one is spread into six, and the fourth one is Mumukshatta, meaning intense desire I want freedom and this is what we need to create this is what we need to have and if you can what can stop you? Nothing after all a Chinmananda from a journalist became a Greek look at his Chinmananda Ashram by the way they also run an Ivy World School <laughs> that's how I came to know more about it so going ahead so what is Vedanta is talking about Sat Chit Ananda. Sat is existent. Chit is now. If I am there everywhere, Sat is what? I exist. Sat Chit Ananda is what? Sat is what? Existent. You remember we had talked about existent itself to understand existent. You know, we generally say, uh, let's say I ask you, I ask you a funny question. I talk to the parent, new parent when they come. I said, you are listening to me, right? They said, yes. I said, how do you know that? They say, why? I can see you, I can hear you. I said, just think, you are seeing me, hearing me. What if you are unconscious right now? Can you see me and hear me? They know. I said, what if you are in deep sleep? What if you are in coma? <laughs> what if you are absent-minded? You are thinking at your watch and thinking about I have to go back to the office. Are you listening to me? No. So, it is not that your five senses make you experience the world, but your consciousness, which is chit, and sat is the existent. What is existent? Isness. I is. So, what is Vivekananda saying? Open secret. And in which he says, Know that thou art the one. And if you read his message over there, know it yourself that you are the one. You are the one is what? That consciousness. Then why isn't everybody doing it? Because we don't believe in it. And we doubt it. So if you are doubting, supposing you want somebody, I was to sign for Sunil, what 10 crore one check for a product, advance money. Yeah? And he comes in and he tells Usha before leaving, I have to get a big check signed today. <laughs> You're in marketing, no? And I'm not sure whether this stupid guy Robin Gosh should go to sign or not. I can assure you there will be a lot of doubts in that. But if you say, I don't know how, I'm going to get that check today. I don't know how, I'm going to do it. Vijay was also marketing, no? <laughs> and... This is why the communication skills, the body language, all the marketing experts have to learn all that. How to make the other person say yes. Yeah? I want to know more. So, going ahead. That existence, sub is chit and existence. Remember, in the paradigm, we talked about three paradigms, right? Bhakti paradigm, the meditation paradigm, and Advaita paradigm. In these three paradigms, you need to go ahead and understand it that if I manifest ethically, it is not possible that it will not happen. 
and this is what Mundakya Upanishad is saying. Satya Meva Jayate. That's not Mandakya, that's Mundakya Upanishad. And I wish to share with you, I've talked to you all many a time. Tameva Bhrantam Anubhati Sarvam. When you shine, Anubhati Sarvam, everything shines. Tasya Bhata, when you shine, Sarvam Idam Vivati. So understand it. Uh, what is the shining? Look at that light. That light is lit. Because of that light, let us say the sunlight, daytime, nighttime, only that light. Now to show the sunlight, do I have to take a torch and show it to you? That's the sunlight. You will smile. Oh, I observe. Now, sun is so powerful and this little torch light. And this is what we are trying to do by saying know it that you are that Sat and Chit and the moment you and I do that we are the torchlight trying to show Sat and now get back to the Mandakya Upanishad this by the way these Tameva Bhrantam Anubhati Sarvam Tassabhata Sarvam Idam Vivati is there in <coughs> Mandakya Upanishad is also in Isha Upanishad right in both of them, this sloka is there. It's telling what? When you shine, the whole world shines. In other words, you shine with what? Purity. With your... Make the effort. What is Vivekananda saying? Whatever you've done at the back, however bad it is, just erase it, start right now. He say, yeah, yeah, sounds very nice. But will it happen with me? You don't know what all I've done. <laughs> Think, hey, if Narad Muni can become Valmiki, why not you and I? We are better than Narad Muni, no? We haven't killed so many people. Think, Angulimba, 999 people he killed. He became a great enlightened master under Buddha. And you and I can't be? So who said we can't be? Today I'm touching upon my 80th birthday, right? I don't feel at all. <laughs> I keep looking at it, sir, and Tapliel sir is always so beaming, and I said, look at him. He's about, I think, four years older to me, no? You're about 84? One year. Huh? One year. I'm 80 plus one. Sorry? 81. 81. 81. 81. Just one year ahead. Younger than me. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So just see, I am telling every parent today, and I'm asking you, all you have to do is starting. We all have done lots of mischief in the past, right? Starting from telling life. Before 55, 60 years, I should tell life. When we started this thing, Vedanta. I didn't know anything about Vedanta. And I was talking, uh, I was reading Vivekananda saying, that if you want to truly develop good character in children and what is this, what is the touch upon topic? Topic is education is not for learning in the school, is not for earning money. Learning in the school is to build good character. And if you want to build good character, he has written it down, what the parents should do. And what is it school should do? It, what we want our western side, I am quoting his word, our western side, so we got IV. Coupled with Vedanta. Now, IV, I didn't know anything. I had to study IV. Okay, IV is like science or math or something I can understand. Starting with Vedanta, I think, my God, Sanskrit language, I know very little. How would I understand Vedanta? I got a message in my meditation. Start. <laughs> I said, okay. I got a message. Whatever message I get in meditation, I don't doubt it. I started looking at it today. A monkey like me can also talk about Vedanta. And I'm telling you today, I was realizing it. Yesterday, when before uh, going in for our birthday celebration, I asked Sharada, what is this function? What is happening? She said, today is a uh, pure function, two and a half hours function. And in which towards the end, there will be question answer. They'll ask you questions about your life. They're not talk. I said, okay, great. So I switched up my mind from thinking about what am I going to talk? <laughs> 
<laughs> champion after the session they asked uh, lots of very good question ira took up the questioning on behalf of all the teachers she asked very good question so <laughs> at the end of it we came back and they did little bit more show and suddenly this gentleman who was the mc said so can we have the wisdom of your talk so i looked at sharada i said you said there i i suppose there is no talk <laughs> she just smiled and i said mother saraswati mother kali you better talk to me and i'm telling you you all listen to the tape i did a wonderful job who is this i not this i that i which is that inside that i and i talked to you about talked to them about this why can't we do this ethical manifestation why can't we do it because we are not wanting to make an effort itself start with the effort start with the regularity of what one time sitting down purity holding on to it i keep talking to yogesh sir yogesh has done wonderful changes from great manifestation of it <laughs> i can see so have each one of you you know how much how well you have traveled i know how much i have traveled i know i know how i used to so if we just take up the journey if it starts to happen today why not now this is what he is talking about that look if i am is there always there that is the i am that is not your mind that's not your body that is that i which never dies it is always there can you experience your death if you have experienced death your death <laughs> have you noticed the moment you have experienced your death i am is gone <laughs> that i am is consciousness which is within you only when you are alive have you realized this i was reflecting on it it is not that you say i experienced toughness in my life today i am leading a good life i experienced sadness today i am eating a happy life because i got a great partner i got a great family i got great money or whatever it is right why not that i is because we are not even making the effort that effort has to come that you all have read about that girl without the you know the part of the leg below the knee climb mount everest if all this wonderful phenomena can take place so it's talking about a very simple logic what is the logic he said satyam eva jayate truth alone will win and in this truth is who is god you have heard this you have read it in bible it says god is truth yeah and if brahman is sat chit ananda if i am sat chit ananda are you with me the logic brahman is sat chit ananda upanishad says lakshmikharat kavi is showing it to you you are sat chit ananda he is not saying you are brahman are you with me he is saying you are sat you exist you are chit you are consciousness that you and i know now and if you attain that existence and consciousness you will attain ananda ananda is what no suffering no sickness no disease it doesn't mean you don't have sickness your body may have sickness your mind may have trouble but you it just happened recently there was a big crisis on <laughs> and my mind got blocked with it and the moment i did it and i generally always sat down for meditation i sat down and i got this message your mind is blocked you have to awaken that mind is not you your body is having the pain see paramam shivananda leg got broken right fracture you have heard it you will still attain samadhi Same day at night, Paramahamsa Ramakrishna. He broke his hand. He went into samadhi. He came out. His hand didn't get healed just because he went into samadhi. Hand broken was still there. He three days before he 
left with body. I've shared with you all. Turiyananda Maharaj. Okay? Hari Maharaj. Turiyananda Swami in later life. Became a great Advaita. He was an enlightened master. He was a Brahmachari attending Paramahamsa Ramakrishna. He came down in the morning and Ramakrishna Paramahamsa had not eaten anything because there was a big lump, cancer thing in the throat. And they say because he taken a lot of junk from a lot of devotees and he took it from him so that they attain enlightenment and he said, my body can suffer, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so, Hari Maharaj asked him, Thakur, Thakur Paramahamsa Ramakrishna is to be called Thakur. Thakur is God. How are you today? And Paramahamsa Ramakrishna said, not well, can't eat, can't talk. Hari Maharaj said, but Thakur, you are looking as if you are in bliss. <laughs> really? <laughs> and imagine, three days to go for him to leave his body. And Paramahamsa Ramakrishna smiled and said, Rascal has got me. Shala Dhore Pelechi. Meaning, his body did not affect his knowing that I am Brahman. You now realize that you and I are bubble or froth or a wave. You know the analogy. We know that I'm the wave. And I'm having fun. I'm excited. I'm playing around. Everything is happening. Another wave comes. He said, hey, Robin Ghosh, how are you today? I'm having great fun. And he says, hey, do you know? Can you see that black line? I said, yeah, I can see it. What is it? He said, that's the Bombay shoreline. I said, shoreline? What is the shoreline? You don't know? I said, no. You're going there. I said, really? I'm a wave. I'm going there? Why? You're going to die there. I said, shut up. Me? What is that? You don't know? I said, no. You will not be a wave anymore. What? I will not be a wave anymore? Shut up. I don't believe you. Have you realized? We go to pay obeisance to somebody who is died. Maybe our relative or maybe some friend's relative. We go. You know, we give him company in the burning god or in Kabristan or in the church. We pay respect with the flower or prayers in the burning heart. But we never think I will be also lying there on that. <laughs> One of these days. We never think. Are you with me? Think. Same way. We don't think that existence is I. Chit. I am <coughs> enjoying this whole world. I am is that I exist everywhere. No doubt about the existence. He's saying, if you are Sat, if you are Chit, very beautiful logic. If you are Ananda, then why can't you be Brahman? It's very simple logic. Chit is what? Consciousness. We all know. Today, scientifically, we know that you have to be conscious. So today, the hard facts of consciousness by David Chalmers, by Bernard uh, Castro, the discussion which I shared with you all last week and the week before that. I touched upon it a little bit today also. And the next week we are going to talk about that what Ashtavakta Gita talked about. And I was sharing with uh, Shadu Ma'am to get that book out, I have to take out that book. It is written by Byram. Byram has done a translation of Ashtavakta Gita. You know, he came to India, he became a disciple of Neem Kairoli Baba. Those of you who have heard the name, in Nainital. Those of you have been to Badrinath, on the way to Garur Kund. In Garur Kund on the left side, there is a little Hanuman temple. And that Hanuman temple is created by Neem Kairuli Baba. And his picture is there. I went and meditated there with Shadama while going to Badrinath. And this Neem Kairuli Baba was an enlightened master. And he taught Ashtavakra Gita to Bhairam. Byram is translated that. I will touch upon it in the next week. I'll read out some of the things. Wonderful translation. Very good English translation. And those of you who can't get that, that is a little expensive. You should go to the Swami Nityananda Nasavakramita. This has got Sanskrit, it has got English, and it's got very simple translation. 
and it's not very expensive. It can't be more than 100 rupees. I know, 60 rupees. This is very easy, 60 rupees. Read them. If what we're going to do next week is we are going to talk about Ujala Ujala, meaning you are the light, you are the one shining. And this is what Ashtavakra is teaching Janak Maharshi that you are that light in which we are continuing now and the moment you attain Sat and Chit you understand Brahman exists Brahman is the existence itself you I am exist I am the existence itself and I realize how do I taste this world how do I see this world how do I smell that flower. I am seeing the flower. I am having enjoyment in uh, Hanover in um, what is it? Norway. Beautiful mountain. <laughs> we were meditating. Hanover is uh, always in snow in Norway, northern part. And we were lucky to get the visa and we went there and I was meditating. And during the meditation, I got a message, ask what you want. So I said, I said, okay, if this is true, can I experience some rain in this place? And naturally, I said it, and mind of mine did not believe in it. <laughs> rain, yeah, yeah. And after the meditation, I was talking to them. And let's have the breakfast. We were living in one of those, uh, what is it called? BNR or something, no? They had a bungalow. BNR, correct? Uh, Air, something like that. Airbnb. Huh? Airbnb. 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 Thank you. Airbnb. We had to hire a bungalow, and beautiful bungalow, and it was everything. They only organized, Sharada here and Mehta organized the breakfast. While we were having breakfast, we said, let's sit in the lawn and let's sit in the veranda. It's nice, bright, sunlight. As we saw, clouds started coming in. And clouds started becoming darker and darker. And we said, wonderful weather. You know, they said, wonderful weather. Now we're finished, let's go for a walk. Beautiful mountainous area, a little village about five kilometers away. Now, we had hired a car. I didn't call for the car. I said, let's take a walk, five kilometers. We'll have, go and have something fun and etc. Maybe have lunch and then come back. <laughs> After a good kilometer, half two kilometer, it started pouring. And I was telling, till then I didn't share with Sharada. I said, Do you know what a monkey I am? Today I asked for this. You know, uh, you all know Guruji. Most of you know Guruji. Guruji and I had gone to all over the America trip. So we went and Pranav, you remember Pranav? And <laughs> so we were with Pranav and we were going from there to Incidental, where Paramahamsa Yogananda's ashram and the Hollywood. And beyond Hollywood, that is near the Grand Canyon. So we were going to Incidental. And Pranav was driving at 80 miles per hour. And there were signboards, 80 written. So I asked Pranav, I was sitting in the front next to him. Because I'm a pilot, I know how to read the map, so I was helping him sometimes. And Rina and Guruji were sitting at the back. And everywhere it was written, what speed in the map itself, and there is a big signboard. So I just thought, I said, if Pranav exceeds 80, these guys will catch him. So I said, Pranav, maintain your 80. He said, yes, sir, I never speed up. Just so happened. His speedometer went a little bit. You know, he's not a perfect pilot, a little bit more. And where from the back? <laughs> and Pranam immediately stopped. You have to put your hands up. That you're not trying anything funny. He stopped. And I was feeling so bad. I didn't say anything. Now police guy came and I told him, see, we have come down from India. This is Guruji, we have come down to visit the place and he was maintaining 80. I am a pilot, I am a trainer, I am a, a Federal Aviation Authority trained pilot and trained. 
I said, see, this is my FAS certification we always carry. So he looked at me and he said, okay, sir, I'm not going to do anything. He was very kind, very nice, very young guy. Okay, sir, we're not going to do anything, but I'll give you a piece of paper. You have to do seven days workshop, that is Pranam. I should do seven days workshop after, within the next six weeks. Pranam was relieved, no pine and things for that. And he started driving again. This time he was driving 75. <laughs> I said, Pranam, after a while I couldn't keep the secret. I said, don't blame me. Actually, I am at fault. He said, why? What happened? I said, you know what? This thought had come to my mind. I keep telling you all, be careful with your thought. I know it now. And sometimes the negative thought will come to you. And the moment you come, you should say, shut up, Robin Bush. It is not possible. Why? Because you are protected. So I am driving to Mumbai. And there is a big sign board. You've written, tire burst cause injury to health. You all must have seen it many a time, right? And supposing I see it, and supposing I think, Oh my God, I hope I don't get a tire burst. I guarantee you, your likelihood of getting tire burst is very high. <laughs> Why? Because you're thinking of it. So what do I do when I get the thought, when I used to? I said, shut up, Babaji is protecting this car. Nobody can touch it. We never had tire burst, not a tire puncture also. So replace it immediately with a positive thought. And now going ahead with our topic today. You cannot doubt the doubter. And you know, in which I want you to I am Ness. I am Ness. Any double S? It's always there with you and me. And this is what he's talking about. In which I want to talk to you about this. Ahab Asmi Sadabhami. You see? Throughout your waking life, you know that when you have gone up to sleep, when you have gone on to dream, when you wake up, you know I was sleeping. The, remember that I am is gone, not gone away. Deep sleep, you wake up and say, I had a wonderful sleep. Deep sleep, as per definition, only consciousness in a tiny bit of a drop is there. That's how you know when you wake up that you are in a deep sleep. Otherwise you wouldn't know because your mind is not there. Thoughts are not there. Nothing is there as per definition by Vedanta, by Western science. There was a talk by one of the uh, English uh, top psychospecialists and this was in Calcutta. And he was talking and some of the people had come from all over the world. One of the American Advaita Vedantis was also there. He is a psychoanalyst Advaita Vedantis. So he asked his doctor, well doctor, <coughs> when you are in deep sleep, do you have consciousness? Direct question. And this gentleman said, no, you have no consciousness. The guy who was taking the class, and this American Vedantis, he gets up and he says, do you know, as per Indian Vedanta, and this is what right now Bernardo, you know, if you go Bernardo Castro, he's talking about worldwide about, he is a uh, scientist, he's a psychoanalyst. He's talking about that consciousness alone exists in the deep sleep. And that's how you know when you wake up that you had a wonderful sleep. Otherwise, you would not. It will be blank, no? You know when you come out of the consciousness, I was conscious, unconscious. Supposing you, supposing I fell down. Why? Because my head swam or something like that. And you get up and I say my head swam. I don't know what happened after that. Meaning what? I know I was unconscious. How do you know you're unconscious? Now if you look at it technically, so I am when I fall asleep, I am. And here, I want to refer to you Descartes as a French, you know, you spell it as D-E-S, S is silent, Descartes, 300 years ago. You know, at that time, 300 years ago, he was a revolutionist. He said that whatever he checked, he was a great mathematician and a philosopher. He said, whatever he found, he used to doubt it. 
is to check it out and find the truth and then only believe in it. So Descartes is saying, supposing an evil demon comes and project at that time there was no virtual reality. He said project like a virtual reality. Today virtual reality metrics and all those of you seeing it, you know, you can project your entire life. You can project your entire and this is what his chat GPT is talking about, right? Is what you can project this whole world, Descartes is saying. How do I know it is true? Descartes, 300 years ago, was saying this world is not real. Are you all aware? Three Nobel Prize winning physicists, 2022. If you all are reading a little bit about it, it's there in Google. Just Google it. Who got the Nobel Prize winning physicists? Three scientists. You will see their name, you will see the picture I shared with you all those earlier. You know what is the topic for the Nobel Prize? This world doesn't exist. And this is what 300 years ago Descartes is talking about. That you can doubt anything. He was a great doubter. He said, but can you doubt the doubter? He said, he said this word. I think, this is a very famous quote, because I exist. So, the scientist then said, supposing there was a time when you're not thinking anything. Okay, your mind is totally zero. Do you vanish? <laughs> you don't vanish. You continue to eat the way. Supposing you are a great yogi, you can still your mind. No? Paramahamsa Yogananda says, I learned how to still my mind. I knew how to stop my heart. Is there an autobiography? Right? So, he said, do you stop to exist? Descartes, 300 years ago, came close to that truth and he wrote about it. He became one of the top, his picture is also there here, it's beautiful. He spells it as D-E-S-C-A-R-T-E-S, -E -E Descartes. So, he denies the existence of the self. Who's saying this? Not Descartes, self word, Shankaracharya. Almost 1500 years ago. He said, those who doubt self, meaning I am, those who doubt I am or I am not. He said, those who doubt self, they doubt themselves. Shankaracharya is writing this. Beautiful. Yeah. So how do you take like Descartes, whatever the uh, things were there, whatever his findings were there, they were refuted by Spinoza about two, uh, I think, decades. Slide, slide. Spinoza, Let me the question. Yeah. Spinoza, who was a, again a, a very great philosopher after who, Descartes, who? Spinoza. Spinoza. Yeah, Spinoza. Spinoza. Yeah. He refuted the findings of uh, Descartes. Yeah. So, once we quote Descartes as supreme one, like, you know, everybody says that he's more Descartes. Spinoza, more you're talking about the one who Einstein believed in. Correct? Uh, yeah, basically Einstein believed in Vinodas. They were, they were the same. Basically, he refuted, he refuted, yeah. the, question? Find, he refuted the findings of uh, right. uh, Descartes. Right. And he came up with a different theory, which was also again accepted very well. Right. But so, what's the question? He, he basically did agree to Descartes. It is indirectly yes. And that is why Vijay, today, the top Vedantists who are absolute Advaita Vedantists is referring to Descartes and referring to Phenomena. You're right, absolutely. Very good observation. Good, you're connecting the thing. Yes, it is true that what Phenomena, Phenomena is, uh, I got his picture of the last talk I talked about him. And uh, Phenomena, Einstein, Einstein said, I don't believe in God. I believe in Phenomena, God. Okay, and uh, I can show you his picture. Very young guy. Finoza was called by today's modern, you know, those very, uh, I would say, spiritually advanced, that he was an enlightened master. Finoza. 
we call it. It's a good even, observation. Even after Spinoza also, certain philosophers came, they also become very famous. They refuted even Spinoza. So these, uh, see in the... So what is the reality? In fact, I'm trying to understand, see we quote certain philosophers, those who have got, I would say, a great uh, following. But ultimately, there certain other person came and he refuted their, this thing that no, this is not, this is real. So look at it this way. Uh, you are, you are understood Vijay's question? No, Shabam did not understand. Vijay, repeat the question again. What, what Vijay is asking, Vijay is saying? So I am asking if one philosopher has come out with certain What's the ideas. truth? What's the What's reality? The the, 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 What's the reality? Always, always What's the truth? Yeah. So see, this is what, uh, not last week, last week Vijay said because of some reason missed it. But the week before that, we had the similar question. So what is happening is, what we are trying to do, and we touched upon it, that we are trying to ask a question with our intellect, with our mind, with our so-called intellectual understanding. So what Vijay is saying is his understanding and belief. And this is what I was commenting on it. What Vijay is doing is he's also done a lot of journey like all of you have done. So, but what we have to go, remember the very famous statement of ancient time. Man ke paar chale jau. Go beyond mind. Meaning, you are not asking a question. You are being it. You are becoming it. Your being. Being is different than, you know, like I ask you, how do you know that you are here right now? You just say, I just know. <laughs> so the Vedanta is saying, ancient time, they think, okay, how do you know that you are real? You are here right now. Do you, you will say what? Do you mind? Of course I am here. Can't you see me? So we are trying to stay away, depend on the five senses and five senses into the brain and into the brain to the mind and depending on the mind but now look carefully remember the ancient and we talked about it from the Mundukya Upanishad at night dark night full moon comes up full moon is showing the light now we're going back to our famous example moon is showing light with which we are doing something imagine no electricity there now do you ever look at the full moon and say it is the sun's light? No. Why? We know it. Technically, theoretically, we know it is the sun's light. But you never say it. You say, what beautiful moonlight. So what do you and I say? What beautiful body. Or what sick body. Or what a handsome, intelligent mind. Or what a beautiful poet or a writer or a scientist or whatever. We are appreciating the mind. We are appreciating the body. We never kind of thing that that mind is powered by the consciousness. The consciousness is the sun, a metaphor, because truly consciousness itself has created the sun and this whole universe and the galaxy. Now, as per Vedanta, so it is the sun which is powering the mind, which is powered to understand called subconscious mind and then reflective consciousness technical term very simple mind starts to be alive and through the brain now it brings the world to the five senses to you you are seeing it now that you are here how do you know you're here because of your conscious if you were unconscious somewhere and somebody brought you here and after two hours took you back <laughs> you would know that you were here so we have to go beyond the intellectualism to understanding by how inner tuition, intuition, intuitive message, which is called, you remember the famous song, May God your Guru, listen to the inner voice, a very famous song in our school, that's our prayer every day morning, listen to the inner voice. So that inner voice is what you get when you purify yourself and do the paradigm shift and you go on to that inside. Today, before we close today, uh, does it, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. We will close. I want you to, we will reflect on it because this thought which we are talking about, I am, 
Understand one thing. Think. Imagine or physically. You can see me right now. Now, I close my eyes. I can't see you. If you have closed your eyes, you can't see me either. I can't see you. This world has vanished from me. Let's say there is pin drop silence. Okay? I can't see you. I can't hear anything. But am I there? I am still there. And when I remove my eyes, I am there. Look at a blind guy. A blind guy who is never seen. Blind from birthright. Does he know he is there? You know, I asked this question. One of the, uh, he's an MBA uh, from uh, Symbiosis. I used to go and do sessions for them, for the students. They used to invite me to go and talk to them again. At <laughs> that time, there's one of the professors there. He's totally blind. And he became totally blind from birth. And he and his wife both finished uh, MBA in HR. And naturally, Symbiosis promoted them to take session, whatever they could. So he, he was a very nice, jovial person. Always is just fine. <laughs> he was here with us having dinner with his wife and things like that. So I asked him, I said, I have a question. That time I wasn't so aware. I asked him, tell me something. He said, tell me, what is it? I said, how did you learn to smile? He said, sorry? I said, you have a beautiful smile. You don't know that. And you have a beautiful smile. How do you learn how to smile? Do you know how your baby learns to smile? When the baby is growing up, mommy goes and says, Hi baby, smile, 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 smile. Now baby doesn't know what the hell is smile. But baby says, I like this face. And I like when this face comes to me. And this face is touching here and saying something and what the baby does is tick one something. Like that. And mommy said, my baby smile, my baby smile, my baby smile. And the baby says, whenever I do that, and that face, baby doesn't know this is my mother. That face, what it does, I like it. So next time when the baby mother comes and touches here, baby smiles. And mommy said, my baby is smiling. These are babies learn how to smile. I know it intellectually. I asked him, how did you learn to smile? Because you don't know what is smile. You don't know what his mother was facing. Mother must have said something like that. May have said. Do you recollect? He said, so honestly, I don't know. I didn't know the answer then. Now I know. And this is called your past samaskar. You know, your attitude from the past. What you have earned in your previous life. That previous life he may not have. And he may have been a jovial guy. He is not forgotten. And this is what it continues today, birth after birth after as per ancient Vedanta and Hinduism. Most of the things. Today, that second meditation is Buddhism, Jainism and Sankhya for interest. They believe in meditation. All other religion, more or less, everything believes in the first theistic religion, Bhakti Yoga, more or less, almost all. And Advaita is, are those who are truly challenged one. And you know, the question comes with, what is true? What is purity? What is true? Answer to that is very simple. What is experience? What is experience? How would you say experience? You are experiencing right now something. When we see the object, when we interact or see the object, any object. Sir, what is experience? Definition. Feeling of feeling of the object. Right? Little better word. You're uh, you're there. Object plus consciousness. <laughs> Very good. It's almost there. Experience is object plus consciousness. You have to be conscious to be experiencing that you are here. You have to be conscious to experience this clock. Are you with me? So experience the consciousness and object. So what is truth? So one of my sisters has written to me, I'll touch upon it and we'll start our exercise. Shangri-La. It is Shangri-La, I don't know if you all know, nobody's ever climbed 
Mount Kailash. You all must have heard about it. Are you all aware? Nobody could ever climb. Russian expedition came, <laughs> took permission from Chinese government. They were halfway through, the whole team vanished. Nobody knows where they are. Decades have gone after that. Many people have tried to climb, something or the other will happen and they have to come back. Okay? Nobody has climbed Mount Kailash. And Shangri-La is supposed to be somewhere north of Assam, right extending up to the Kailash Manasarabur. Right up to their Kailash Manasarabur. That's called the Shangri-La. In which they say Kailash Manasarabur is one of the places where there are great saints and monks who live there. They've gone beyond age. They've gone beyond time. There are a thousand years Rishis are also there, which you read that in Himalaya. That's part of the Himalayas. But like what Vijay is saying, what is the truth? What is real? You have to experience it. And now in this book, Advaita Makaranda, this Lakshmi Bharat Kavi is writing, do you experience I am? That is the truth. That is Sat. Chit, how do you experience this world, this universe? Through the consciousness, through the mind, through the brain, through the five senses, the whole world comes to you. It comes through the, once again, through the brain, through the mind, and the mind has the power from the consciousness to experience. If I am unconscious in coma, the whole world vanishes. Sat, Chit, and when you actually realize the truth between the two, that Sat and Chit, the I am, you attain Ananda, meaning I am. So now I am the way. I am having great fun. I am going to die. I don't believe in it. I don't believe it. That guy said, what a loser. And he goes away. Another way it comes. Uh, sir, small question. Yeah. Uh, sir, we say that I am not uh, Mano Buddhi Chitta Ahankar. Hmm? Mano Buddhi Chitta Ahankar, I am not that. It is a very Mano Buddhi Chitta Ahankar. No. I am not Mano Buddhi Chitta Ahankar. ahankar. Hmm. But still, I say that feeling of I, that is what feeling of I is there, that is a product of my mind ultimately. You are absolutely right. When I associate, you understood his question? Mano Buddhi Chitta Ahankar Na Aham. But look at the last part. You're right. When you're saying Mano Buddhi Chitta Ahankar, you and I think we are. But what is Shankaracharya saying? He's saying Na Aham. I am not that. I'm not that. Yeah. I am what? Uh -huh. Chidananda Rupoham Shivoham Shivoham. I am Chidananda Rupoham. But when I say yeah. I, I, when I say I, like you say the feeling of I is 24 hours with me, feeling of that yeah. I cannot doubt myself. Yeah. So that feeling of I is basically a product of mind. Absolutely true. I is that true I which is the self, which is the, through the Chetana, which is Sat, uh, Chit, and Sat is that I, existence of that I. Is that I, which is not the mind, not the body, not the brain, it's more than that. Experiencing that I, which is not, which is beyond the mind, how can I would say it's possible because mind is always there. You are not experiencing it. Very good. Uh, his doubt is, the moment you think experience, experience is what? Is an object with consciousness, right? So you are experiencing, who is experiencing? Enlightened master. So what does he do? I experience I am not a wave. How? Because Vedantic master comes to me who is another wave and says, hey, why is your face so small? I am a wave. I said that monkey told me I am going to die there. Then it is true. I said, how? He says, you are water. The guru tells you, you are Brahman. And he said, me, Brahman, yeah, yeah. He said, why aren't you believing it? He said, <laughs> the guru asked him, okay. Tell me something. You know you are Robin Ghosh? He said, yes. How do you know you are Robin Ghosh? Why my mother father told me? He said, okay, how does your mother and father know that you are Robin Ghosh? He said, nurse brought the baby and said, this is me. And so the guru said, how do you know that the nurse didn't change you? 
Somebody else's baby had brought you and showed it to your mother and father. He said, no, no, no. So I spoke to the nurse also. Nurse said, no, I brought you. And she has signed on the paper. The guru said, a nurse is telling you that you are Robin Ghosh. And I am telling you you are Brahman. You don't believe me? <laughs> so what is it? I realize I am water. The moment I realize I am water, what do I do? I look at everybody as one water, one consciousness. And now I continue to operate with the mind and the body and the wave and the ocean and a bubble and a frog. But knowing all the time, I am that. And this is what Nicaragua, he was going up to mountain Himalaya. And what did he do? He stopped and he said, why am I going up to Himalaya? Can't I have a Dharavi Brahman? So he came back and lived all his life with that. So good questions, answers. Thank you. <laughs> Let's take on with the physical sessions.